So about a month ago, I did a video where I introduced my new MacBook Air M1 that I purchased. It's my own computer. It's not one that was provided to me by a vendor. I wanted a very light computer that I could carry around and travel with, and it's it's great for that. I hope to one day travel again. Obviously, COVID is, is going on. The M1 has now GPU and acceleration capabilities for machine learning, and that's that's really cool because Mac has not had CUDA for a while, so this helps a lot on TensorFlow. Now, I showed how to set up TensorFlow and how to get going on this computer and how I, how I typically set up a Mac for machine learning. Now I want to do an update of that. One month in, what have I found out using an M1 Mac? What worked, what didn't? It is a system on a chip, so I was able to install TensorFlow. I had to get used to not using Anaconda Miniconda like I'm used to. You can install these on the Mac, but the problem is it, the Mac has that ARM chipset. So if you're using Anaconda Forge to get your packages installed from, if you're using packages that have binary code in it, which is a lot of them when you're dealing with machine learning, you'll run into potentially some software incompatibilities. If they haven't pushed a ARM compatible M1 compatible version. One notable program that I like to use that has given me a lot of trouble there is PyTorch. Now, you can get PyTorch working natively on the M1 MacBooks, and I have done this to some degree. I'll recommend this towards data science article on how to do that. There's a lot of steps to this. Normally, this is one of the nice things about PyTorch is that it's so easy to install, but this is just not quite there yet in terms of a particularly easy install, but you can actually get this working. It just does not have the degree of official support that I would really like to see yet. You'll also run into some issues like Box. I ran into this. Washington University uses Box for faculty members to exchange files. Box drives support on devices with M1 chips. Yes, they do have it, but this I really don't know, like. Box Drive utilizes kernel extensions currently. They really need to move away from that on Mac development with M1 devices. Basically, I have to switch my entire operating system into reduced security mode. I don't like the sound of that. So basically, I'll just use the web client for Box. I don't use Box a whole lot anyway, but I do need to use it with the university. Once they fix that, I will install Box onto this computer. But you'll see programs that make use of kernel extensions and they just don't they just don't run as well as you might hope for them to do, and you have to potentially do that reduced security mode. Have any of you tried the reduced security mode? I'm curious. Let me know in the comments how that has worked for you. So if you open up your activity monitor and you go to the CPU, you'll see here that some of these are using Intel. So like this utility that I'm running right here, this is from Canon. It's basically driving my camera that's pointed right at me recording this. So they're still running Intel. I am quite happy that it, that it worked, but you can see quite a few of the programs that I'm running have really moved over to the Apple Metal. Uh, come on, Cyberduck, you need to, need to do some updates. All the Adobe software that I use for editing that all works just absolutely fantastic. Parallels. I use Parallels for virtualization on the Mac, and I can run Windows 10 on it, but I really feel like I lost a lot on Windows emulation going to the M1 chipset. If anybody has had better luck with this or has some suggestions for other programs to use, let me know. Because overall, Mac does really a very good job of emulating through Rosetta the old Intel code. 
Parallels, I'm not so happy with. The first thing that you run right into when you do this is you need an ARM version of Windows. So now I'm running the ARM version of Windows and you have to go download the trial version and all kinds of fun, unofficial sort of scary stuff. I'm running an evaluation version of that currently. But this does let me run my Windows software, but you run into some of the same compatibility issues that you run into on the Mac. So now you're running a version of Windows 10 that won't, won't necessarily give you 100% compatibility with Intel. I would really like it if there was a way that Parallels could actually emulate and run the Intel version of Windows 10. Maybe they'll do that in the future. The other gripe that I have with Parallels is I have not been able to figure out, has anybody been able to do this in the comments? Let me know. I basically sent in a support request to Parallels. They didn't answer me for 30 days and then marked my thing as idle because nothing had happened and auto closed it. It's like, thanks, I was waiting for your response. I wasn't being idle. So the problem here is you can't actually install the ARM or the Intel. I would love to be able to run a completely virgin copy of Mac OS inside of here to record videos off of showing how to install something from the very, very beginning. That's the problem there as well. So I'm, I'm not too happy with my Windows emulation on here, but most of the stuff that I run will run on Mac or Windows just, just fine. So that's not too much of an issue. For my course in deep learning, I've really had very good luck with this. I've run most of these class examples on the Mac have not had to make too much changes to make them work out of the box with M1. Some of the course though will not work. For example, StyleGAN 2 ADA. This is NVIDIA software written for CUDA. And there's no emulation layer going on there. This is written for M1. So now we've got basically, we used to just have OpenCL and CUDA. Now we've got a third one because the M1 doesn't particularly support OpenCL or much less CUDA. So it's, it's a third machine learning sort of platform that now needs to be supported by software. So it's, un, it's unfortunate that basically they have to introduce an entire new completely programming language direction. But hey, Apple is the one that decided basically they had to invent a new programming language. Whenever they created Swift, did we really need a whole new programming language just to program Apple devices, but hey, that's what they did. So perhaps Apple Metal is similar sort of direction. So long as they can get support for it under the covers in Python, um, I'm quite happy to use it. And it really has worked quite well in my course. Yes, succeeded by Monterey. And it's currently in beta. So I have not been working with this one yet, but this, this should be a considerable update for the M1 computers, and I'm looking forward to working with Monterey. Have any of you worked with the beta version of Monterey? What does it look like for machine learning and the M1? Does it, my understanding is that it will ease the installation process, but I would love to hear any of your results on that. I just typically do not have time to deal with beta operating systems, but who knows, I might, I might make an exception in this case. Well, thank you for watching this video. And if you want to keep keep up with the machine learning that I do both on Macs and Linux, I, I mean, I use all three, please subscribe to my channel and give this video a like if it was helpful to you. Thank you very much.